Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we've got a brand new ship to take a look at. Wargaming once again has loaned me the new premium tier 5 cruiser, the Molotov. Now a few things you should know is the Molotov is a Kirov class uh, cruiser. I almost called it a destroyer. The cruiser, the Kirov, is tier 4. This is a tier 5. Let's go over a couple reasons why it's a tier 5, shall we? Starting with our commander, it's Kuznetsov, uh, Kuznetsov, Nikolai, whatever you want to call him. Uh, we've got Norman Scott and Andre Rue as our commander uh, inspirations. Of course, we've got Follow the Sun. We've got Beyond Range, Intuitive, Equilibrium of Power, Fixated, and then the Extra Consumables perk. And, of course, we have him as a level 11, I believe. Yep. All right. So that's our commander. This is our build for the ship. We have aiming systems mod 1 and steering gears mod 2, which gives us the extra steering. And that is needed in the ship because this ship's steering is horrendous. Not so much that the steering is bad, but because it's such a long ship, as you can see, much like the Iowa, it struggles to turn. But let's go over the rest of it, shall we? So first, foremost, we don't we get a plane, we get a uh, sonar, we do not get smoke. Uh, also, this seems to come with a new uh, flag. Maybe this is something they're going to do in the future. Uh, they're going to start adding new flags for the new ships or something. It's different. People have been asking for flags for a long time, so it'll be interesting to see how they go for it. So we've got the uh, commemorative flag for the Molotov here. Then if you go to survivability, we have 28,400 hit points, which seems pretty low for a cruiser at tier 5. Um, I don't remember everybody's stats, you guys know this, but it does seem pretty low. Uh, also, doesn't have much in the way of armor, so don't expect to uh, bounce a whole lot off this thing. Your main thing is to not get hit. So artillery, we have 180 millimeter guns, just like the Kirov. Um, you have nine of them, two turrets at the front, one turret at the back, and you have a firing range of 17.3 kilometers. Uh, so use that to your max advantage. 12 and a half second reload time. Um, it's not amazingly quick or anything like that. Not, it's nothing to sneeze at, but it's not impressive either. Uh, HE shell damage 2137, but you get a 13% chance to set fires over the. Uh, 150 or like the 152 millimeter guns get a 12% chance to set fire. So you get a little bit better chance to set fires. Um, armor piercing, 4,400 max damage. It's got secondaries, but not much of them, and they're pretty small, so don't count on them for anything. Uh, torpedoes, you get torpedoes, but they're again four kilometer range, and you get six of them. So, and I'm assuming it's one per side. That's usually how cruisers go. I haven't really paid attention to them, but that's generally how it goes. Now, with our perks and everything, we're up to 37.1 knots, which is pretty good for a cruiser. 37 knots is pretty darn good. I think that'll be rivaling your French cruisers right there, except we don't get an engine boost. But as you can see, turning circle, not great. 860 meters uh, with a rudder shift time, 6.3 seconds, which is pretty good. Um, detectability. 12.4, not particularly good for a cruiser at tier 5. Uh, that'll be right up there with your uh, Pensacola, I believe. So, uh, not a very good detectability at all. Overview. Sure shot means, as with all the Russians, you have a lower trajectory. Means the shots don't lose as much speed. And it makes it easier to shoot. But it has an above average range that we know of. Uh, the Russians can reach out and touch people. And exposed, below average concealment, the ship is visible to enemies from greater distance. Already went over that. And Molotov, be um, bearing a close resemblance to Kirov class cruisers. I guess it's not a Kirov class. I thought it was a Kirov class, but I'm apparently wrong. She was based on the, an improved design, Project 26 BIS, in contrast to her prototype. The cruiser received significantly reinforced armor while re retaining extremely powerful artillery and a high speed so i guess the armor like i said don't count on the armor on this thing to actually stop like 
rounds from anything bigger than small caliber guns, okay? You will regret your life choices. But because it has two thirds of its firepower at the front, much like the Baltimore net, you don't have to give up the broadside of your ship all that often, so you make more uh, use of your angled armor that is thicker. But again, it's a cruiser. Do not assume that you can take rounds. <laughs> Try to avoid them whenever possible. But there were four of these built in 1941. It entered service. So, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so, now that we're in the gameplay, let's go over a little bit more about the feel of this ship for me. And, I'll be honest, it's just, it's, you know how I feel about fire starter builds right they're just not that much fun for me to play however they do have their uh, their good points and this match is going to show some of those good points um, we're not going to be able to demonstrate the long reach and, and burning people down from a long ways away in this match so uh, I apologize if that's what you're looking forward to but this isn't going to be that this is going to be more of a supporting cruiser defending my side of the map from an ungodly amount of opposition. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. So, uh, without further ado, let's get this party started, shall we? Now, first thing you're going to notice is we're on fault line. I start... Oh, God. I'm sorry, battleship. That's on me. I apologize. Don't tip me over. It's on me. I start pushing towards the right. I like to go over here and uh, hold this side. My teammates don't appear to be wanting to do that. So, being the fact that I'm in a light cruiser, which, this thing isn't completely a light cruiser. It does have some armor, and like I said, if you're bow tanking, it, it can actually bounce rounds, but don't count on it. Um, the other thing is, obviously, torpedoes horrendous. Don't, don't worry about using them unless the worst happens and you're finding yourself four kilometers from a battleship. <laughs> Because that's about the only time you're ever going to use them. Um, but anyway, you can see we're already detected. Why would we be detected? We can't see anybody. Which means the destroyers are out here. They're coming for us. And our teammate is kind of sailing right into the center of the map. Which is not a good strategy when you're the only teammate in a destroyer on this side of the map. Because generally speaking, at least in my experience, that was very close. More destroyers spawn on this side then spawn on the other side in my experience usually they spawn one or two of them in the center and then one or two off to the far right and they all seem to converge into the center of the map so you're gonna see me taking some shots at the Kirov right off the bat we've got a New York out there we've got two destroyers already detected and then there is a I want to say it was a French battleship that was back there so uh, there's a lot of opposition on this side and we're not going to get a whole lot of support from our teammates. Uh, we are going to do everything we can to keep an eye on the map and try to protect our battleship. That's the goal. Can we do it? We know that there are multiple destroyers here. And hello, yep, there was a Normandy. So we've got a Kirov spotted. We've got the Z-22 spotted. Normandy spotted. New York spotted. And now we've got another... Uh, destroyer coming up behind us. So you can see I'm starting to focus the destroyers now Which is what you want to do. I'm angled pretty well uh, Away and then I'm going in reverse changing my course Trying to make sure that if anybody does shoot at me they fail now <clears throat> You'll see this mate or this Nevi here has or Nevni. It's Nevni. I didn't know it was a Nevni But either way this guy has royally screwed up He's firing his guns because he can't use his destroy or his uh, torpedoes because they're short-range torpedoes. So he's doing everything he can. However, you don't want to be in this situation. And if you find yourself in this situation, the best thing he could have done here was switch to armor piercing and try to get some good armor piercing shots on me. But uh, he's going to find himself on the wrong end of some rapid fire high explosive. And you can see I look for destroyer or look for my torpedoes initially, and then I was like, you know what, screw it. Let's just burn him down. And down he goes. So we got our first kill. Took very... Oh, God. I'm broadside to a Kirov. If this Kirov had loaded armor piercing, we would be in a bad way. But he doesn't. Which is preferable. However, I am not going to make the same mistake. 
because I'm counting on him continuing past that island, which would be a stupid thing for him to do, because I'm here waiting for him, and my teammate is here in a battleship waiting for him. And so, why would he push past this island? There's no benefit for him to do so. But he's going to, <laughs> and he's still going to be broadside on. You can see I go ahead and throw the torpedoes out there just in case, and then we go ahead and start loading the armor piercing and just blapping them every time we get a chance. Get one citadel on them right through the front, uh, showing that, yes, these, these, these Russian cruisers just don't take hits very well. And then, I don't know how I didn't manage to uh, penetrate him there. <laughs> I must have had the worst dispersion on the planet, and it just happened to hit the only place that thing has armor as he turns in and somehow gets away with it. And uh, unfortunately, you'll see later in the match that that could potentially have just cost us our Kraken. <laughs> that one moment where I should have killed him and didn't. Now this Farragut, again, a short, short torpedo, uh, a short torpedo range destroyer gets into an open water gun battle with a cruiser that has rapid fire high explosive loaded more often than not. You do not want to take this fight, destroyers. I know that you have guns. I know that you, you can't quite get into range to do your torps, but for the love of God, pick your battles better than this. It doesn't work in your favor. It'll never work in your favor. <laughs> If you're choosing to fight somebody, it's like picking a fight with an Atlanta. Not quite as drastic, because an Atlanta will get rid of you in a hurry. But it's very similar, because this thing doesn't wait around. And uh, sure enough, we finish them off. So that's two destroyers now. And they're a cruiser that died. Now a Normandy's got broadsides at me, but you can see my team has... Oh, look! Torpedoes! Who'd have thunk it? Now, naturally... We dodged them. They didn't have enough range to get... Well, they had more than enough range to get to us, which means that was not the Farragut that had launched those. We're going to go ahead and take one here because I kind of misjudged uh, whether or not I could get around it or not. I should have kept staying left, but we do take one from the Farragut there. But whose long-range torpedoes could those have been? Now, there's a smoke screen right there, and our teammate in our destroyer is sitting right here, sailing right away from it, and he's just like, ah, do 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 why is there a smoke screen? I don't know. Screw it. It's probably one of the guys that already died. And I'm like, no. No, there's somebody over here. And it just happens to be a German destroyer. So, uh, we're going to go introduce... Oh, look! More torpedoes. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> but they're launched in wide angles, and you're never going to touch me with a wide angle launch. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, hello, T-22. How you doing? forgot about me didn't think you were gonna get detected <laughs> you were wrong and now you're gonna die when you play with fire you're gonna get burned it's just the way it goes and down he goes now as you can see our team is playing cleanup there are two battleships left a New York and the um, forget <laughs> I want to say it's the the French battleship but anyway, we're going to push all the way across. You can see I'm trying to aim. I, I can clear the mountain, but it's all about coming to a point where I can actually hit the teammate or hit the bad guy. And I just can't quite pull it off. Uh, it's very difficult to tell which way he's traveling. If you look at the map, you can see he's kind of traveling away from us at an angle. So it's really hard to judge where you need to fire. So you're just kind of firing all over the place, hoping that you're going to find the sweet spot. And unfortunately, we just don't. But... We're about to see him, and that's going to help us dramatically to figure out where we need to shoot. But as we get closer, you can see less and less of my shots are clearing the mountain. Uh, so we're going to have to try to get away from the mountain a little bit. And you can see that's why I turned left. Get a little bit further to the left of the mountain, and there we get some good hits right into the superstructure. And that's going to be pretty, pretty good damage consistently. As long as, uh, and the chance for fire, obviously. And you'll see, I think at some point here, I go ahead and switch to armor piercing. Just to see what the armor piercing can do against a battleship. Um, and right there it is. I go ahead and switch over. I'm figuring he's, never mind, he's dead. Great. 
great. So we go ahead and switch back to high explosive because this guy is sailing away. However, he's not really sailing away. He's kind of sailing broadside to us at the moment. So th again, this will give me a chance to potentially go with a uh, salvo of armor piercing just to see what will happen. We take the shot with the high explosive and this guy just happens to set a nice smoke screen for us. Isn't that nice of him? So I don't even have to worry about getting shot. I can just park right here and just pepper the guy over and over again until he submits. And as you can see, we're capturing the base because they're on their way through it. We've got a heck of a points lead. We've got, we only lost two ships this entire match. So there wasn't a whole lot of damage for me to get. But for what we ended up fighting against, and that being at least half the enemy team, three of their destroyers, we killed all three of their destroyers and took a lot of health off of their Kirov, which was then finished by our teammate. So we, we did everything we should be doing as a support cruiser. The only thing that we could have probably done different was try to uh, get some more damage here by uh, shooting armor piercing. We do load armor piercing, except this time we don't quite give it enough, and we only hit him with one shell, and it bounces off of his torpedo boat. So we aim a little higher this time. Not sure if he's actually going to run aground. Notice we hit the island there, and unfortunately, well, fortunately, we get the damage from the fire to kill him off, giving us our fourth kill. So we did everything we could. Uh, you guys know that this isn't my sort of gameplay style. It's, you know, this rapid fire, high explosive. But we get 3,000 base XP, top of the leaderboard in a tier 5 match. So not, not too bad. Would I recommend it? I mean, if you're into these sort of thing, I, it's nothing that the, Kuz, uh, the Kutuzov isn't better at. And I believe that's in the campaign right now. So personally, I would rather go for the Kutuzov because it's just better in every way. It has better range. It's a tier six. It makes more money. Uh, it's just everything about it is better. But if you want a, a mid-tier fire starter build, you could do worse for a premium. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. It's up to you if you want to buy it. It's personally not something that I would be willing to pick up. But it's not a bad ship. It's just not my play style. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.